Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Mobox Graphics and today we are going to model and animate this keyboard in Cinema 4D. I will be teaching you the basic steps to this so you can also create your own thing, but it is quite easy to start with. Hey Eli, before we jump straight into the tutorial, let's just give a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is a perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. This fall, Skillshare teamed up with Adobe to create exclusive online classes showcasing the possibilities of Adobe Fresco. Adobe Fresco is a brand new drawing and painting app with the most advanced brushes in the world with a modern experience that balances both ease of use and powerful tools. Not only that, it's perfect for artists, illustrators, animators, sketchers, and basically anybody who wants to discover or rediscover the joy of drawing and painting. It's free to download today on your iPad. One class that I found interesting in particular was this one called Other Worlds, and it shows you how to illustrate a fantasy scene with Adobe Fresco. You should definitely check it out, it looks super interesting. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you could sign up using the link down in the description and get a two month free trial. Thanks again for Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Eli, let's get back to the tutorial. So let's jump in Cinema 4D and we're going to start off with creating a first keycap, so one key. We can do that by creating a cube object and in here we don't need a huge one like this but we're going to keep it quite large still uh, just because it's easier to work with. So let's go with something like 40 centimeters on every side but maybe it can be just a bit less tall so the Y value can be something close to 30 for example. So that's a bit more in proportion. Okay, so let's also go to display and enable some lines so it is easier for you to follow along. Let's make this object editable by pressing C on the keyboard or clicking this button and we're going in the polygon mode. Let's select this top polygon and let's say this is the front view. We're going to use the scale tool by pressing T on the keyboard and let's scale this down just a bit like that. Now we're going in the edge mode so we can select this front edge and you can see the handle is kind of rotated. So if we press this button, we have the coordinate system of the world, so that makes it straight again. You may have to redo that if you were in the rotation mode still. So in the move mode, we are going to enable that again. And let's move it back just a bit. Okay. Now let's go ahead and press K and L on the keyboard, or right click and select the loop cut tool. We're going to click somewhere close to the middle. So we have this, and you can see the offset is somewhere close to 50%, but let's make it exactly 50%, so that's exactly in the middle of the cube. Now let's select this top line, and we're just going to move this down a bit, so we have this dome shape where the finger can rest in. But now it is a bit sharp, so we want a bit of rounding to this. So let's go ahead and make sure we have the cube still selected and press this subdivision surface while holding Alt or Control on the keyboard, so it is apparent automatically. This rounds the cube, but this is a bit too much rounding, so let's go back to the cube, and we're going to disable the subdivision surface for just a second, so we can see what we are doing. Let's go ahead and press K and L again to get the loop cut tool again, and we're just going to add some cuts close to the edges, so we have a bit of smoothing again. So at the bottom it can be very close to the original edge, so we have a very sharp line at the bottom. At the top it doesn't have to be that precise, so we can just make it a bit bigger, like this maybe. We can also move it if it's needed in a later stage. Um, let's also add a cut at this side, and also at the other one. You could add very specific values if you want to, but it's such a small piece you really don't notice if it isn't exactly symmetrical. So you have to make sure we have a cut at every side. So you want a square at every corner, at every side. To test this out, if it works, we are going to re-enable the subdivision surface. And in my opinion, this already looks nice. If yours doesn't, you can go ahead and go back in the edge mode and select a loop of edges and move them around to get a different kind of smoothing. Or you can also right click and use the slide tool that's an easy one, especially for the ones that have a bit of a different kind of shape, like this one, the V-shape. Or if you really messed up, you can also right-click and click Dissolve to get rid of it. 
But in my case, I think this was just fine. Okay, so this is one key. Now we want many of these. Of course, you could do this by just manually copying and pasting them next to each other. But we're going to do this in an easier way. And we can do that, of course, with a cloner object. So let's create a cloner and drag the key inside of it. By default, the cloner is set to a linear mode. We don't need that. We need a kind of grid. So let's go with a grid array. We don't need them to be stacked on top of each other. So let's lower the number all the way to one. And from here, it gets a bit different. So we are going to set this to grid. We have one on this side and we will count how many we need to the other sides in just a minute. But down here, we need to set this mode from endpoint to per step. So we can set up how much space we want in between every cap. To get the right result, you could eyeball it like this, or you could also go ahead and get a reference image on Google Images. So if you search for an ANSI keyboard layout on Google search, you will get something that you can use. So we can also go to the top view in that case and press Shift and V to get to the viewport options. In the back menu, we can set up an image like this. So you download the image and load it in here. And that way you have the image as a background in just this viewport. So we can also set up a transparency so it is a bit easier to see our actual models on top of it. Okay. So we can already tell that the keys are a bit on the small side for this. So let's just scale them up with the scale tool. Maybe let's also disable the cloner for now so we can see the exact size. So something like this will do. It doesn't have to be spot on. Let's re-enable the cloner again. And we're going to play with the values to see how much spacing they need in between each other. Of course, we need to find a place where we can align some of them to. So maybe let's go somewhere close to the middle here with the J button. Looks like we have a bit too much spacing. So let's go with 54 and go down that way. So in my case, 53 seems to be a good number. For you, it could be a different one. Of course, we need to copy this value to the other field as well. So it is closer to each other. But as you may notice, we have a perfectly aligned grid right now, but a keyboard isn't like that. So we need to offset some of these rows. So here comes the magic of a cloner combined with a plane effector. So let's create a plane effector and we're going in the parameter tab and let's disable the position on the Y value. So set that to zero, but we want to shift this on the X value. So in this case, we can go with something like, I think 12 centimeters for me. It will be different on yours, but right now you can notice that everything just shifted 12 centimeters. So it isn't fixed at all. So we need to go to the fall off tab and in here we can create all kinds of fields or if you are on an older version of Cinema 4D, you will just have some kind of box falloffs and spheres. In this case, we just want the box field or the box falloff if you don't have the fields. We're going to rescale this so we have it just aligned to one row of keys and also make it long enough so it covers the entire row. Also notice that we have a falloff inside of this so it doesn't really apply to these last two keys. It just does that very softly. So we're also going to stretch this all the way to the end. So we have a very hard shift. So let's go to the top view again and see how much we need to shift. We can also move this field up a row because the one we just had selected is fine actually. So let's go ahead and go back to the parameters and see how much we want to shift this. So minus 12 seems to work for me again. Now we're just going to copy and paste this whole plane effector and not just the field. So we can do this again with the other rows. Of course, if you copy this, it is not being applied to the cloner just yet. If you go in the effectors tab of it. So make sure you drag it in there as well. Let's also make sure we move this field. And this one will be positive 12 centimeters maybe or even more maybe 24 so something like this and now we need one more for the top row so let's drag it in the effector field again trace this up to this side and adjust the x value again okay i think that will do for me the bottom row and the odd sized keys are not important for this one we will add these manually so we just want to make sure we have these at this side but also 
we have some excess at this side. We will fix that later, but just make sure it is all covered. So for me, we could also say we want this escape button, which is the same size. So actually I need to move this even more to the side. Also you can ignore the colors, that's just a visual reference for now. So one thing we can do now is removing the keys we don't need at this side. So with the cloner selected, we can go to MoGraph and select the MoGraph selection tool. You can notice these very small points at the center of the clones. And we can select the ones we don't want. So we don't want this one or this one and also the second one. And you can also hold shift to add more of them if you release the click. Let's also remove three of these. Now with these all selected, go back to MoGraph and we can go ahead and click Hide Selected. This is also a feature in the newest versions of Cinema 4D, um, but you could also replicate it with a plain effector and just enabling the visibility option in there. But Hide Selected is easier. So you can notice they disappeared. That's exactly what we needed. Now we're just going to add the odd shaped ones. It's not too difficult. All you need to do is just copy the main key we had inside of the cloner and paste it outside of there. Then just manually move it on top of an odd sized key, like the tab button for example. Try to place it in the center as much as you can. And then let's open the subdivision surface and select the cube. So we can go in the points mode with the rectangle selection tool and just select this side of the cube and drag it so it lines up with the side and then select the other one and line it up as well. So that's all there is to it. Now we can just copy this one for example and move it down and just repeat the same steps. So I'm going to speed this up for you because it's just a repetition. So I had these copied all under the same subdivision surface. So only the first one has the subdivision surface smoothing being applied to it. So let's go ahead and select all of these and hit the subdivision surface button while holding alt on the keyboard so it is apparent of each one of them. Let's also make sure it's not a child of the other ones. Okay. I can also go ahead and press alt and G to group this so it is a bit cleaner. That's better. So now we have the whole setup of the keycaps. Of course they need to be laying on top of something because we can't have them floating. Let's start off with a cube object again. And we're going to make this a bit less tall. We can eyeball this. Let's go back to the top view so we can see the exact size we need. Let's make it just a bit bigger than the actual keycaps. Maybe something like that. Let's raise it up to see how this looks in proportion. Maybe it can be a bit thicker in my case. And we're also going to make sure we have a bit of space so they can be pressed down. Okay, so that's the basic shape of the bottom. But of course we're going to adjust this a bit. For example, we can go ahead and make this editable again by pressing C and use the loop selection tool again by pressing K and L or right clicking and finding it there. Let's go in the edge mode as well, of course. And we're going to make a loop cut somewhere at the bottom half of it. With this whole ring still selected, let's go ahead and select the scale tool. But we also need to make sure we have the ring selected. And we're going to scale this up just a bit. We don't need it to be that wide, so we can manually adjust that with the red handle. But I want it to be a bit bigger towards the front and the back. Okay, now I would like to add more detail to this. So one more thing we can do is already placing this into a subdivision surface as well. So, but this is way too much smoothing again. So we need to go back and add some more loop cuts to this. So we need one on top of the middle one to counter the smoothing on that side and also at the bottom. We also need one closer to this bottom side so it is a bit sharper so it can lay on the floor. And also one at the top here I guess. Let's also add these at the corners so we have the nice square polygons at every side again. Maybe tricky on some sides to get the right selection. Okay, let's see how this looks. Okay, so that's a bit smoother already. One more thing I would like to do is adding some deformations to this because right now it is just very flat and boring. So let's add a shear deformer for example. Let's drag it on top of the cube so it is a child of it. That way we can press fit to parent to get the exact same size for the cage of it. 
and let's enable the strength. So you can see it is trying to shear it to the side, but I want it to shear towards the back. So let's rotate this 90 degrees, like that. And also we can hit fit to parent again, so it is a bit more nice. And I'm also going to disable the curvature on this, so it is just a straight line. The strength can be something close to 9%, for example. And I'm also going to add an FFD deformer to this. So let's drag this under there as well. Hit fit to parent again. So I can just select the row of points at this side, the very back top row. And I'm going to try to raise these up a bit. Make sure you place it in front of the shear deformer. Otherwise it doesn't work like you could just notice. Of course this also means we have to rotate the keycaps because that doesn't work right now anymore. So let's select all of this and just rotate them very slightly. We can go in a side view for that. Okay so now we have all the basic setup for the model part of this. Now we can go ahead and add some animation to this and later on we will add the textures. So for the animation you could go with many different ways. If you want to animate every key manually that is an option. But I wanted something that is a bit more automated, so it isn't as specific which key is being pressed. So how we can do that is selecting the keyboard cloner, go to MoGraph and select the shader effector. This one is set to scale by default, so let's disable that. And we want this to move in a position value. So we want them to be pressed down. We can do that with a Y value, going to minus 6 for example in my case. It can be a different value on yours. Now they are all being pressed down at once, so we need to go to the shading tab and we're going to add a noise shader in this. Now it is a bit more different which one is being pressed, but let's go inside of here and get a bit more specific. Um, we are having a timeline of 90 frames, so we want an animation of this noise so it dynamically moves and we want this to be 3 seconds. So we have a loop period of 3 seconds it doesn't count in frames, but in seconds. And 90 frames translates in 3 seconds if we have a 30 frames per second, which is the case by default. The speed can also be 3 in this case, but that's up to your preference. It's just how fast it will move. And we're also going to change the kind of noise. So if we go to the side here, right next to noise and click this arrow, you can see the different kinds of noise. So for this one, a nice option is to use the dense noise. So you can see the name at the bottom or when you hover above it. So let's select this one. But we're also going to change how this looks. Because now it's just a bit of a mess. But if we go down a bit and raise the low clip option of this to something closer to 76%, we have more blacks. So we don't want all the keys to be pressed all the time. We just need one or two to be hit every few frames. So every white part will be hit. And that's why we need all this black. We're also going to add a bit more contrast to this maybe. So something close to 50 for example. That makes it a bit more defined on the edges. So let's see what happens if we play this. You can see the keys are being pressed. But it is a bit fast and the releases are very sharp. So that's not exactly a smooth animation. So what we can do is going back to the keyboard cloner. Having that selected. Go to MoGraph Effector and add the Delay Effector. This makes it a bit smoother when you have other effectors doing their thing. You can go ahead and make this all the way smooth, which makes it very slow. Or you can also lower this to make it more clicky again. So this animation could be enough for you already. But I think we need the spacebar to be moving as well. Every now and then. Not as much as the other keys, but it has to divide the keystrokes. But in this case, the spacebar is not inside of the cloner, so that's a bit of a problem, because all these effectors, like the shader, are being applied to a cloner and not this subdivision surface. So the trick to this spacebar, or any other key actually, is placing that inside of a cloner as well. So let's create a cloner. But the easy way to do this to have it exactly at the right spot is selecting the space button, and then go ahead and create a cloner by holding Alt again, so it is apparent. That makes it being placed exactly at the same spot. But we don't need three of them, we just need one of them. Okay, so now we have this cloner selected and we can create a new shader effector again. 
It will be mostly the same, but we will have to do some different things. Of course, we don't want the scaling again. We want this minus value, minus six or seven in my case. Let's go back to the shader tab again and add a noise. For this one, we are going to use different options. There's nothing that really works for every scenario. It's mostly just trying things out and looking if it works. For me, using the turbulence one was a good option. And we're also going to set the speed and the loop period to three again. That was just fine. And the adjustments mostly happen down here. So we want a lot of black and not too much white. We can do that again by adding some of the low clipping and also raising the contrast. So that makes it very sharp in this case. For this space button we want a bit more white than the other ones because it's just one button that needs to be hit with something at the bottom here probably. So we can try that. And you can also play around with the octaves for example to get a bit of a different result. So 4 can help in my case. And let's see if it actually hits the spacebar. So it does. You can also use different seats to get a different result. And of course, I also want the delay effector to be applied to this. So let's go to the cloner inside of the effectors tab and drag the delay effector inside of there as well. So this isn't exactly the most clean one, but you can try different ones with different seats and different combinations of noise to get another result. Okay, so that is all there is to the modeling and the animation. Now we're just going to add some lights on this and some textures if you want to see how that looks. So first of all, I'm going to add a floor surface so we have shadows that can be casted on top of that. We're also going to add a light to this as well. So that can be an area light for the most realistic look. Let's make this roughly the size of the keyboard actually. And we're going to raise this up and move this to the front a bit. Maybe we can also put it somewhere here and we're also going to make this just a bit stronger so 120 percent and let's also add an area shadow on top of that we're also going to place another one at the back side of this so we have a bit of a backlighting this one can roughly stay the same size as default we are also going to add a bit of an area shadow to this and we're also going to add a blue hue to this as well next up we need a bit more light to this because if you render right now it is a bit hard on the shadows. So I want to light up the whole scene with just an Omni light. And let's scroll down and enable the ambient illumination option. But it doesn't have to be that strong because it was not that dark. So 40% will just do. One more thing we can do is adding a spotlight at the back as well. This is just all optional of course, it's up to your preference. Let's make this one orange and uh, add an area shadow to this as well. And that will give this whole scene a bit more of a contrast between the blue and the orange. It even makes it look like we have a desk lamp or something. Now one more thing I would like to add to this is an ambient occlusion effect in the render settings. And also the global illumination effect. The global illumination will make it a lot slower to render, especially if you render out the animation. But I think this looks the best. And also we are going to add some LED light effect on this in just a minute. And that's only possible if we use the global illumination option. Okay, so let's add some materials to this now. Let's just start off with the white keys. So let's go in the reflectance tab. And you're just going to raise the specular strength a bit more to 50% or something close to that. Let's also create a duplicate of this material with the same settings, but just change the color. So I want to go with a teal color like this one and also one off teal, so a bit more green. And we can drag this on top of there. So the white keys can be like that. We wanted the other ones to be the different color. And maybe just this one button can be the green one. Like that, so that's quite easy to do. Also make sure you have the space bar as well. Then for the floor surface, we can use anything we want, of course. But I had something nice looking in my opinion. Uh, so it's a bit of a dark bluish grey. Let's also go to the reflectance tab and add a background layer on top of that. We're going to do the usual thing, which is going down to layer for now and change this to dielectric. And we're also going in the layer mask options and add a noise on this to break it up a bit more. 
And we're also going to make the roughness a bit stronger, so something close to 15% maybe. Let's drag it on top of there as well. And this will give us more reflections on the surface, which makes it look a bit more interesting. We will render in the end in just a minute. Also the plastic case at the bottom can be white. Now for the LED lights at the side here, we are going to create a new material again. And let's disable everything and enable the luminance channel. In here we are going to add a gradient. Let's go inside of it and keep it at 2D U. But we are going to press this small triangle next to the gradient. In here we can load a preset. So this can be anything you want. But I'm going with a rainbow look. Like this one. So we have a bit of RGB going on. So that should do. Maybe we can make it a bit stronger as well in the illumination options down here. So maybe we can go with something like 200 maybe. Just on the generation, it doesn't need to receive global illumination. Um, let's select this bottom cube and go in the polygon mode. So we can select a loop of polygons, which will be this one. And just drag the material on top of that. Right now this wouldn't move, so we want to add some animation to this. We can do that with the offset options. I think it's the U one. But first we need to make sure it is being repeated nicely. Because we have these weird edges right here. So let's change the projection mode to frontal. That will work. And maybe we're also going to add back the color and the reflectance to this. To give it a bit of a softer look. It doesn't have to be that strong. Let's go back inside of here. With a zero offset. And we're going to look if we see anything that is looking wrong. But it looks fine in my opinion. If it doesn't seamlessly integrate with itself at the ends, you can change the length of it. But it looks like we don't need to. So let's set up a first keyframe right here at frame 0. And let's go to the other frame. So we have this blue look right here. So let's move this until we get the blue look again. So that's not exactly 100 for me, but more like 104. For you it can be a different value, it depends on the size I guess. So that should make it kind of loop. Okay, so that's a bit of looking around again for your specific case. It is not one size fits all. One last thing I would like to show you guys is how you could add some letters on top of these keycaps. I think it is a bit tedious to do for all of them because you need a new material for every single letter. But let's just try a one letter. So let's create the new material. It could be any color you like, so I'm just going to borrow uh, one of the green ones, but a bit darker. Let's go to the alpha channel and enable that. And in here we are going to add, I think, an effect, which will be the spline effect. Let's go inside of that. And we're going to enable the fill option straight away, so that makes it a solid shape. We want this to be more centered because now we have this going on, it's kind of cut off. So let's go with, I think, 50% on every value. And let's also change the text to Q, for example. And we're going to try to center this as much as we can. Doesn't exactly matter. We just need to make sure the scaling is exactly the same on both sides, of course. Okay, I think this will work like it is right now. So we're going to apply this just on top of the whole cloner, like this. So now we have it on every keycap, which we don't want, of course. So let's go and see where we have it applied to. So now it's on just the cube. We want it on the keyboard cloner, like this. If it doesn't work for you, it means that you have the white material being applied to the cube. So let's drag it on top of the keyboard uh, cloner. And then we can drag this one on top of there, so it overrides it. And now we can disable the tiling and change the projection to flat. This will give us a weird result, but in the UV texture mode still, we can rotate this and scale this like we want to. So 90 degrees rotation, let's scale it down. And now we can move it like we want it to. So this gives us a lot of control how we want it to look. And you could even apply multiple ones of this. So if we just duplicate this one or use a new created one, you can just move it besides it. So it's all being applied on this cloner. So we still have the dynamics of the animation. So that went a bit wrong there with the material on the cube object. So make sure it's all being applied on this cloner on its own. Okay, so all there is left is just rendering one more time. 
And while this is rendering, I can already tell you that was all I wanted to show you guys today. If you want to take a look at the file I created with the whole scene around it, you can download that file on the Patreon page together with all the other files of all the other tutorials. So go check that out. I hope you learned something new today and I will see you in the next video.